This is Ripple.js, a new front-end framework from XReact and Svelte core member that takes the best parts of all the frameworks before it, like fine-grained reactivity, scoped styles, JSX-like syntax, and it's super fast. But do we really need a new framework? And with React already super popular with humans and AI, is the uniqueness of Ripple enough to make it stand out? Let's find out. And before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Ripple.js is currently in early development, but it's easy to set up and supports Tailwind out of the box. Unfortunately, I've had to use the Ripple for VS Code extension because even though it does have an LSP, I couldn't get it to work with NeoVim. Boo. Anyway, once you've got the basic Ripple app and look at the index.ts file, if you're coming from React, this part should look very familiar with an app component that is mounted to an element with an ID of root. But the thing that's different is the Ripple extension, which compiles this code down to a language that the browser can understand. Let's get rid of everything inside the app and delete this track import. I'll explain that later. Here we have a component keyword, which Ripple uses to create a component. Ripple is actually a superset of JSX, which includes this keyword. So all we have to do is write some JSX code, like hello world, and that should render in the browser. Ripple templates are statements and not expressions. So they work a bit like this, and that's why we need to add braces. From here, we can add some basic reactivity to this component using the track function to create a single tracked value. Then we can print the value of count using the at symbol to access reactive values. And then we can add a button with an onclick event handler similar to React that has a function to increment the count that looks like this. We can add some more buttons and add some CSS classes using class instead of class name, but adding these classes to the other buttons would be a bit repetitive. So let's create a new component that has children and the on click prop, then give it some code. And then we can use our button components for all of our buttons, which now looks like this. Ripple also supports scoped styles. So if we wanted to, we could give this a class of buttons and then use style tags in our component to give this some CSS, which should render in the browser. And we could even use the effect function to run side effects. And because there's no virtual DOM, the whole app gets rendered once and only the reactive elements gets rendered when there's a change. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example that first uses a tracked array, which is a fully reactive array to hold the value of to-dos. Note there's also a tracked object, tracked set and tracked map. Then we're using a regular if statement to display the number of to-dos if they exist using a for of, then we're printing the length of to-dos down here. Notice when using a reactive collection primitive, you don't need to use the at symbol when referencing a reactive value. Down here, we have a form with an input and our button element, which is imported at the top. And the form is using the on submit event handler to run this handle submit function, which is outside of our component that creates a new form data, gets the information from the input and pushes it to our reactive array before resetting the form. And that's how easy it is to create this basic to-do list. No hooks and no complex state management. But if you do take this reactive value out of the component to use globally, you'll get this error. If you want to share reactive values between components, you can do that with Ripple using context. Ripple also has a portal component, a suspense boundary, and its own experimental router, as well as this really useful LLMs.txt file that gives you all the important Ripple documentation to use in your favorite agent. And that's a very quick overview of Ripple.js. To be honest, I really like it, and I'm excited to see what a 1.0 release will bring. But it is, of course, missing the wealth of plugins that React already has. And as far as I know, it can't be used on the server like React server components. But as it stands, it is a very promising start. What do you think of Ripple.js? Do you plan to use it in a future project? Let me know in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.